Welcome to another wonderful and exciting night of WordPress. Um, tonight is going to be special. It's another SEO uh, meetup for WordPress. Um, I know there have been quite a few this month, so we're going to be doing an SEO month. Um, tonight we have uh, two exciting speakers. Um, we have Casey Gillette from Grasshopper, who will do SEO and WordPress. Um, and then we have Brian and Andy from HubSpot who will also be doing the same, only with uh, HTML5 and CSS3. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, for those of you who are new to this meetup group, um, this is going on for about a year and a half now. Yes. Correct. Um, we have uh, meetups once a month, the last Monday of every month. Um, and we'd like to thank our host, Microsoft, for uh, donating the space and the, the wonderful fruit and drinks. Um, um, we're always looking for people to, to speak, so if you have any interest in doing that, um, contact us, any suggestions, any ideas, stuff like that, um, we always welcome that. This is Kurt Ang, I'm James Coletti, we're the co-organizers. And all the information that you need to know is up here. Um, the Wi-Fi code is uh, came from have a website right now. We're in the process of trying to change it up a bit, but excuse me, feel free to take a peek. Um, we're on Twitter, at BostonWP, and hashtag uh, BostonWP. Okay. Okay, so SEO and WordPress. I feel really loud. Um, okay. So I need to preface this presentation by telling you that I have to give a maid of honor speech so I've been practicing that as well. If I start telling you stories about my crazy college days, raise your hand and stop me. <laughs> so, formalities. Um, my name is Casey Gillette. I am the SEO manager at Grasshopper Group. Um, we're located in Needham. Um, we're a company that is kind of trying to come out with a bunch of different products for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, our first product is Grasshopper. It's a virtual phone system, so you, know, you can get 800 numbers, all that great stuff. I've been doing SEO for about five years, um, and SEO with WordPress for probably about four. Um, mainly just because it's so great, we want all our clients to use it. So, show of hands, um, how many people are actually doing SEO? Okay, great. Um, and how many people here are responsible for their business's website or their company's website? Okay, cool. Um, so, can someone tell me like one myth they've heard about SEO? Nothing? Anyone's ever heard anything bad about it? It's all truth. That's right. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a few. So, the thing about SEO is you hear people come out with things all the time, right? Like, SEO's dead, it's not, no one's doing it anymore. A myth. Um, they tell you it's easy. SEO isn't really easy because it's time consuming, right? There's a lot of easy things you can do, but it takes up a lot of time. Um, magic, no. Sometimes it does great things that kind of seem magical. Um, it's not cheap, so it, if you're trying to outsource and someone tells you they're gonna do all this wonderful stuff for you for $500, they're lying. Um, a guarantee, there's no guarantee. The search engines do whatever the hell they want and we have absolutely no control over it. So the best we can do is, you know, just make our sites for our users and think about search engines in the meantime. So, when it comes to SEO, there's really a few things that are really important, right? So your site architecture, how your site's built, um, your keywords. Keywords are really the cornerstone of SEO. You know, they form how you're gonna drive your business strategy, how you're gonna drive your content strategy. You'll hear people say, oh, keyword rankings don't matter. That's a bunch of crap, because if, your key, if you don't have keyword rankings, you don't have people finding your website. Um, links and content, I'm sure you hear people saying all the time, you need to build content, you need to build links. So I'm going to cover those four things here, but I also want to incorporate it into WordPress, right? Because WordPress is such a great tool when it comes to SEO. So, to start with, I want to talk about site architecture. And there's really, you know, three main things that are really easy to implement. So the first one is your URLs. So when you're thinking about your URLs, you know, we think about it for search engines, but we also should think about it for people. There's a few things. You want to use your keywords. 
like I talked about, your keywords are the cornerstone of your SEO. So when you're thinking about your URLs, do you want to look at a URL that tells you the keywords and what's on that page, or do you want to look at a mishmash of numbers and letters, and, and you don't know what it is? As a person, you don't want to do that, and as a search engine, they don't want to have to try to figure it out either. So a few tips, keep it short, use hyphens. Um, sometimes you'll hear people say, use an underscore, use a hyphen, they're not sure which one to do. Best practice kind of says use a hyphen. Um, to search engines now, they're basically the same thing, but to your user, um, sometimes you can't really tell, right, if it's a space, and you don't want anyone messing it up. Things not to do. Um, if you're using WordPress, you really don't have to worry about session IDs. Um, duplicate URLs a little bit, but you don't have to worry about case sensitivity. Um, on our site, Grasshopper, I'm such a great example of myself, um, we use a different CMS for our main site, and it's case sensitive. So every time someone types the link someplace that has a different letter, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, I have to go and block that in the robots file. Well, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So if you're using WordPress, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So within WordPress, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. Um, it didn't blow up as well as I was hoping. But you have this permalink setting. And the nice thing is, it gives you the option to put whatever kind of URL you want. Um, so you know, they give you this great P equals one, two, three. That doesn't really tell you anything. Um, so let's say you have a page about you know, blue t-shirts. What would you rather that URL be? This random number or your domain slash blue t-shirts? Using the custom setting, you can actually create whatever you want. You can create a nice URL or something like this. But you're Amazon, so it doesn't matter. So the next thing in architecture is crosslink. And what I mean by cross-links is how you link from one page to another. And that's not your navigation. So if you have a blog post, and let's say you know, you're talking about your blue t-shirts, maybe you point that link to your blue t-shirts page. You want to put the link on that keyword text. Um, one of my favorite stories is that if you Google the term click here, Adobe is the number one result. Because throughout their site, they put the link on click here so many times that that's what Google ranks them for. So it kind of shows you how important those keywords are. Um, you know, include your page topic. Because remember, the easier it is for humans to figure it out, the easier it is for search engines as well. Tell the user what they're about to click into. Um, and don't overdo it. Don't go putting links on every keyword you can find just because you think, oh, yeah. This is really going to help my SEO. No, it's not. It just looks terrible. Um, one of the first things I do, I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you mean by tell the user? Um, sure, sure. So when you're using a keyword, right, you want to tell the user what they're about to click into. So let's say, for example, you have a blog post and you mention, oh, I have these great blue t-shirts. Well, if you put the link on that phrase blue t-shirts, the user knows that when they click on that link, the page that they're going to be taken to is probably going to be talking about those blue t-shirts. And the same thing applies to the search engines. So they can automatically attribute that keyword value and relevance to that page. Um, so one of the first things I do is when I get a client, I'll go through the site and just think, OK, what keywords are already here that I can link from you know, one page to another? Because it's not only about just you know, helping people. But the easier it is for the spiders to get around your website, the easier it is for them to index your pages. Um, sitemaps and FAQs, another really good place to get you know, that good keyword text on a link. Blog posts, again, like I mentioned. And then, of course, there's the footer. Um, you know, maybe you have a link to your home page. But instead of saying just home, um, for instance, like Grasshopper, we will say virtual phone systems. And that will link to the home page. And that's across your whole site. So here's an example, and this might make it a little easier. On this page, they're talking about you know, hiring a copywriter. And on the link, it says content writing services. Well, I know that if I click onto that link, I'm probably going to be taken to a page that's about content writing services. Where on this one, the link just says here. So it says, see a spot which they've used Monday here. 
I don't know anything about that site. Yes, from the article, I can probably infer what I'm going to see, but I'm a person, so you know, I can use my knowledge to grab that. The search engine doesn't have that same knowledge. So the next thing is sitemaps. Um, sitemaps, pretty basic thing, but they have a lot of value. Um, again, you know, if you have that sitemap, and let's say a search engine's crawling your site and they get stuck, as long as you have that link to the sitemap, they can always get back and get to any other page on your site. Um, same thing with a user. I always use Apple's because I think they do a really great job. Um, it's broken down in logical order, products, um, you know, service, maps, accessories. So the main thing is keep it text-based. And again, that kind of goes back to what I was talking about in terms of, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll go ahead and finish what you're saying. Okay. I've got a question about okay. that in general. Um, keep it text-based um, for the same reason, right? That the keyword relevance part. Logical order, keep it simple, add it to the footer. Um, I always recommend that people put the sitemap in their footer mainly just for usability purposes, but again, let's say you have you know, a page that somehow gets indexed and the only link that they can get, search engine can get out of is through the sitemap. Casey, can you make these slides available? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so are you suggesting that we have a page on our, on our WordPress website that's specific for sitemaps? And there's actually probably, I know there's, there's a plugin for it if you don't want to do it. It's really simple though. Um, it's as easy as going in and just adding a few couple links, um, however you want to order it. The second thing to that is you can create a sitemap specifically for the search engines. And these are called XML sitemaps. The great thing about an XML sitemap is that Google, Yahoo, MSN, they're basically giving you the opportunity to let you hand them all the links to your website. So an XML sitemap takes, ooh, sorry, all the links, all the pages, and puts it into you know, a specific format. Um, and then you go into Webmaster Tools and you submit it. Now yes, they get all this great information about your site, but they also give you information. So they can tell you, you know, what dead links there are, what errors you have, they can also tell you what keywords people are using to get to your site. Um, Google recently even started giving out click-through rates, so you can see what people are clicking through to your site and how often, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, sitemap generator. I use this tool, it's called xmlsitemaps.com. There's a great plugin if you want to just go ahead and do that there, it'll do it for you, um, and it's right here. And it's, it's recently updated, so it's compatible with the latest versions of WordPress as well. So in addition to those things, you know, those are really the three main important things. And, and the gist of it is, you know, make it as easy and simple for the search engines and for your users. Your navigation, right? You don't need it dropping down 20 different levels. It's just hard. Um, and, and if you're using you know, JavaScript, a search engine can't get through that. Flash, there's a lot of questions about Flash now. Um, and, and I realize that you know, it's sort of making its way out, but it's going to be there for a while. Search engines can actually read Flash. So whereas before, they didn't know what any of anything was, and it was, oh, don't make your sites out of Flash, they can actually read it. Um, I still don't recommend you build it your site in Flash, and you give them other text, but it is accessible. Images versus text. So a lot of times you'll see people put their headers in an image because it looks nice, right? Um, you'll see text box, but they're actually an image. Search engines can't read images. So all that great text and all those great headlines, you're not getting any real value out of that. Um, put, it in, put it in text, you know, with... It really doesn't look visually that good. Well, the great thing is, you know, with, you know, CSS, you can pretty much style things to look like you want them to these days. Um, so a lot of the times where before you had to do things in Photoshop to get it the way you wanted, yeah. you know, see the new technology has really allowed you to almost like create the design right. with just your text. You can do sort of like a scary yeah. Halloween font? Yeah. Yeah. Um, redirects. 
um, you know, you get to a page and then it takes you to another page and it takes you to another page. We may not notice that, the search engines do. And if you get to, they get to your page and then it directs them someplace else, they don't really know why. Um, there's two types of redirects. So let's say you had a page that you're not using anymore. What you want to do is 301 redirect that. A 301 redirect is permanent. So it tells the search engine, I'm not using this page anymore. So any links that are coming into that page, all the value is actually transferred to the new page. The other kind is a 302, and that's temporary. So all that link value is gone because they just think, oh, this page is just holding for a little bit, it'll be back. Um, so if you do have to redirect, use a 301, um, but try to limit the number you do, you do actually have. A robots file, um, even if you don't need anything in your robots, the first thing a spider does when they get to your site is look for it. So you can just have a blank one. Um, it's as simple, you just upload it to your root directory, it's there, and uh, they know what to look for. Um, sure. Um, so I can actually show you. If, well, so a robots file tells the search engines what to index and what a not to index. Robots file. Yep, it's called robots.txt, and it's as simple as creating it in a Notepad file, right? Um, and it's literally like, let's say you have a directory and it's just all your private stuff that you don't want out there, um, or maybe it's a duplicate of something else, you can just put that file folder in it and, and they won't go in it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to do. I know it sounds like, oh man. <laughs> but, does it go in the root? Yep, yep, you just upload it to your directory. Does that come with the WordPress install? It doesn't. Um, I'm sure there's something out there. I, I really just open up, if you Google it, there's two things, and it says user agent and then disallow. Um, it's a text file. I really, I always just open up a notepad, copy it in, save it, and upload it. Um, so how, how would you verify that it's working? So in your webmaster tools, it'll actually tell you um, if your robots file is working. Um, would, you, would you have some time at some point in this talk to talk with us how we use that webmaster function? Yeah. Um, yeah, we can get to, we can cover that at the end. The nice thing about having this stuff, right, it's all best practices. They have this great plugin that it's called All-in-One SEO. The issues that I'm talking about, it alleviates a lot of that. They're just good things to know. Um, and the last thing is your error page. You should make sure that when you set up your site, it returns a 404. I'm pretty sure that that's what comes with a story about that. Um, but you can create a custom page, right? So some, here's a couple other links. So that's really all I have on site architecture. Um, they're what's gonna drive your strategy. I mean, they're gonna be what's gonna drive your entire online marketing strategy, really. So what you wanna be able to do is identify which keywords are right for my business or which key right, keywords are right for my website. So when you start doing keyword research, I like to approach it is to make the biggest list I can possibly think of. Um, you know, what describes your product? What describes your website? Um, what describes the industry? Think of anything that you know comes up in your head. How do you describe it? How would your customers describe it? Um, take a look at your competitors. It's one of the best things you can do. I'll just do a search, um, you know, for that competitor, and you can see that what keywords they're using in their title tag. You can go to their site, check out their source, see what keywords they're using. Because a lot of times they've already done the work for you, um, which is nice. PPC, um, if anyone is doing paid search or has done paid search, it can be a really valuable asset because you know what works and what doesn't and what converts and what doesn't. So you know, if you happen to have been doing PPC, a lot of that initial legwork is already done. Um, so what I tried to highlight here is just you know, the extent that you can go. You know, just trying to think of different adjectives um, and all the different ways you can say one word. Um, but the main thing is you want to figure out what are people actually looking for. To do that, you can look at search volume. So there's all these tools, um, and these are free. These are all free. Um, I mainly use Google Keyword Tool because most of the other ones are pulling in Google's data. Um, and they're never going to give you 100% accuracy, but it's pretty darn close. 
Google Analytics? I don't see that listed there. Um, analytics is, I mean, you could use that as well if you already have it set up on your site. Um, definitely, you could take a look and see you know, how people are already getting there. These things are actually going to tell you um, how many people are searching in a given month. So this is Google's keyword tool right here. And it tells you that in one month for the term Apple Notebook, this is local and this is global. So locally, 12,000 people were searching for it. Globally, 74,000. So you can start to see, all right, well, you know, if I have to decide between Apple's new laptop and Apple Notebooks, which one am I going to pick? Um, you know, there's a whopping 36 people looking for this. So it kind of can help you. Um, you don't want to base it solely on search volume because then you have a better, better idea of what you should be targeting. Um, and again, there's a number of free tools, but I usually just go with Google. Um, and then I kind of just look at competitor stuff as well. Question. Are you also, you talked about SEO, are you also doing Grasshopper's PPC strategy? Um, we actually outsource that. Okay. Does, is, do you find it's different sides of the brain? It PPC? definitely is. Um, I look at PPC data probably once a day. And it's amazing that some of the terms that convert, convert for PPC don't always convert for SEO. Um, but it, there's a lot of similarities. So I mean, it helps. Yeah, we actually were in some analytics today and we found that our, uh, our conversion rates from lead to opportunity uh, in organic search, you know, like keywords, uh, was 10 times higher than PPC. Really? So that, and we track everything. So it's just that dramatic, it just shocked me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can use your keywords as well. In terms of keywords, are you going to uh, after a keyword with the highest lead? So not always. So that's kind of the tricky part about because keyword it's, research. It's the highest, so how right. it with others. Well, that's the thing, right? It may be the highest search keyword, but it may not best describe what your actual business is. So you want to find keywords that have a decent amount that people are actually looking for. But just because a word has you know, a million searches doesn't make it the best. It may be too broad. So you know, if you had, were selling Apple laptops, you're not going to target Apple. You, know, you would just never, ever be able to do anything for that. You would never be able to rank regardless of how much content you wrote because it's just too broad. Um, but this can give you an idea of if, what people are looking for. When you do your initial keyword research, is that data broad? Is that a broad match number or is that an exact? I do exact. Okay, so um, these are exact match These numbers. are exact match, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so within Google you can choose broad or exact. Um, I, I do exact. All right. Um, is there a way that you can generate or do you go over that? <laughs> Things related to Apple computers, for instance. Can you generate this so type of list? The great thing about this tool and, and all these actually you put in a couple keywords and they'll give you related ones so that you know you may put in two terms and they'll give you back 50. So it kind of helps you you know compile your list without having to do all that work. So the next thing like I talked about is choosing your keywords. Um, search volume like we just touched on just because it has the most search volume doesn't make it right. Um, it needs to be relevant to your site and to your business. Relevance is really the key, um, and it's what you should focus on. Don't pick a keyword because you like it or you think, I just, I really want to rank for this. Pick a keyword that's relevant to your site. So it used to be in the old days, people would, at the bottom of their page, in the visible text, put tons and tons of keywords. Yes. Which actually sounds like a pretty good <laughs> idea. What's the, the, nowadays it's not? It's not. And, so I'll tell you, you guys probably won't think it's funny, but <laughs> the first time that I realized what a nerd I was, I was, you know, looking at a client's site and looking at competitors, and, and I hit control A, and all of a sudden this, you know, huge thing of hidden keywords comes up, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And the guy turns next to me and was like, what are you looking at? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> but people don't do that anymore because it doesn't work. Um, you actually get penalized now, right? Um, so what people used to do is they would have a white background with white text, and it would just be all these keywords stuffed in there. The same thing with like title tags and keyword tags. They would put as many as they could think of. Um, and sometimes you'll still see people do that with their footers. They'll still put pretty big footers, but you know the search engines are smart enough now that they've caught on to that stuff, so don't do it. 
Um, and that just looks bad. Um, it seems to me like I've been seeing more of that lately. Really? At the bottom, you'll see like what look like keywords in different font sizes. Like at the bottom, it's a block. Maybe like a, a tag cloud, maybe? Yeah. I th that's a little different. Um, that's more for like usability type stuff and aesthetics. Um, I, I, that doesn't really, that doesn't penalize you at all. Um, so the last thing with keywords is your CEO is not always right. Um, they want to be, but they're not. And sometimes you have to say, look, this just, this is not the keyword that you should be ranking for, or you should be trying to rank for, because you just aren't going to do it. It just doesn't relate to your business. Um, and so that's, this is the marketer's dilemma. Yes. You, you, have to, you have to show a report once a month. And we have to show that we're we're, yes. we're page one on every single item that corresponds to our business. Otherwise, we lose our jobs. In the next the next. Uh, well, here you go. This is what we did at my first company. Um, we were one of the companies that guaranteed top ten rankings on search engines I had never heard of. So there yeah, you go. <laughs> so the next thing you'll do is you're going to write your title tags, your meta tags, and your meta or your meta descriptions, right? So there are those three elements, and I'm sure you've heard people talk about title tags. Title tags are very important. And the title tag is the thing that shows up at the top of your browser, and, and it's whatever you put in there. Um, and that's pretty much the biggest off-page element that a search engine looks at. Your description, also very important, because within the search result, that's what shows up. So whatever description you put in is the description that they're going to pull for, within the search result. Meta keywords, not important. Um, and it's just what you, know, you touched on. People used to stuff the heck out of them. So now they just they don't even really care about them. Um, I don't really use them. Sometimes I'll put you know, one or two in there just to have. It's more for an internal search engine. So a lot of times your internal search engine will pull that stuff. Um, but don't go stuffing your keyword tags because you think it's going to help you. No. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, if you look at your source code, you have your title. You have your description, and then you have keyword tags. This is a search result. This is your title, and this is your description. So that's how important these two things are, because that's what's going to show the user. Your description needs to act as a call to action. So you need to write it so that a person is going to want to click in. So it needs to be relevant to what they're searching for. But more importantly, you know, it needs to entice them. So some writing tips. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, just a quick question about sure. keywords. Is there some optimal number? Um, have, like, don't go more than 10? In like your title tag, you mean? Or just in the keywords. keyword tag? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Um, that example I showed you was really bad because there were like 20 in there. Yeah. I just haven't changed them. <laughs> but for new pages, I don't, I'll don't. i add one or two. That's pretty much it. So, so the thought would be, I can't put the keywords in the meta keywords because it's certainly the nodes. I'll just bring my text in the nodes, kind of like stuff the keywords in my text. How's, yes. how's the search engine going to... Well, they're not, but, um, and, and I'll touch on it in a minute. You're not writing for the search engines. You're writing for your users because your search engines aren't going to buy anything from you. Um, so if you're stuffing those keywords in there, it's going to read like crap, and no one's going to purchase anything on your site. Um, so when you're writing this other stuff, there's a few things to keep in mind. For your title tag, try to keep it under 65 characters because that's what's going to show up on the search result. Um, one to three keywords. I always end a title tag with the brand name or the name of the site. You um, ended versus the front. It's a big debate. I do. And the reason being is if I'm a search engine and I see this title tag, right, and, and it has your brand name on the front, that's what I'm going to think is the most important keyword. You know, we read left to right. So what's probably going to be the most important thing, the first one? Um, and for your users too, right? Like that person's searching on a keyword. If the first thing they see is your brand, okay. But if the first thing they see is your keyword, it's a little more relevant to their search. Um, people do it their own ways. <laughs> um, for your description, try to keep it under 170 characters. Like I said, call to action needs to be easy to read. 
So, writing for search engines, um, it's kind of you know a tricky thing, right? You want to use your keywords, but you want to write for your users. So, you want to utilize your keywords, and you want to get them in where you can. So, your H1 tags are pretty much the most important you know keyword or piece on your page. Um, and again, with CSS, before your H1 tag would be gigantic, but now it's not anymore. So you can style it how you want, and it still has that important header to it. Um, you want to keep your content current. Um, I try to go through our site. You know, we have a blog, so that obviously updates it. But I try to go through the actual site at least you know once every couple weeks, just you know updating content, updating any tags if I need to. Um, need to add new content. Um, great thing about a blog. Um, yes, it's time consuming, but you're constantly adding new content around those keywords. Internal links, like I touched on, um, a great way to increase your keyword relevance, get search engines around your site. Um, how are you going to do it? Um, sometimes you look at your site like, I don't know what else to write about. Um, I know I do that all the time. I can only write so much about a virtual phone system, as riveting as that sounds. Um, so I'll try to think about features, right? You know, what service does this show? What features do we have? Um, new stories. What's new in the industry? What's new with our company? What's new with the product? FAQs. FAQs are a phenomenal way to get keywords into your site and answer questions. So. I had a client once who didn't want to add FAQs because he thought it made us look stupid, right? That we weren't answering our customers' questions. That's not really true. Customers are always going to have questions, and a lot of times they are stupid questions. So you could add keywords and have it on your site at the same time. Articles. Um, you can add articles on your site. Um, press releases. You know, press releases are kind of becoming a thing of the past but maybe you want to write it and add it to your site just to have it on there, right? Um, blog posts, pretty easy way to add content. Um, very easy way. So, like I said, write for people, not the search engines. You can write for the village people. <laughs> the next thing is links. So. With SEO, you'll always hear link building, link bait, links, links, links. The reason links are so important is because in the eyes of the search engines, the more people who are linking to you, the more relevant you are. So think about it like there's this product, right? And, and all your friends are talking about it. Well, it must be pretty decent, right, if all these people are talking about it. It's sort of the same things with the links. So the more people linking to your site, the better it probably is. So, backlinks. The reason I included directories on here, um, back in the day when I first started, I would spend maybe eight hours submitting a client to 500 directories because that was how you built links. Um, you'd exchange them. You'd just have these crappy pages that just were links. People don't do that anymore um, because they weren't useful. Again, it's one of those things search engines caught on to. Just, it doesn't really help, but with directories, there are still a couple that, that can help you, right? Like niche directories, local directories. I can't stress enough if you have a local business to put your site in local directories. Um, search engines are becoming so localized and so personalized that even if you put yourself in you know, the yellow pages directory, you'll see that stuff coming up. So the more places you can be, the better. Um, Google local. I think it's Google Places now. Make sure you have your business in there. Um, partners. Partners are another great way to get links. It's easy. Um, even if you're exchanging links, right? So there was a thing that you can't exchange links. You can't have paid links. The search engines were penalizing people. But a partner is really just a partner. You know, you're having a little bit of text around it. It's nothing really shady. And, and it's really a great way to get a link. And if you have like a big partner, definitely can help. So if you, know, if you have IBM as a partner, do what you can to get a link from them. Um, paid links. There are ways that paid links are OK. And that's if the person who cited is, is saying this is a paid link. 
technically. Um, if you are going to do paid links, do it because it's going to bring you traffic, not because you think it's going to bring you link value. Forums, so forums again, kind of a thing of the past, but still really valuable, right? If you're in the niche forums um, where people are actually looking for your product or your service. Articles, one of the nice things about the SEO industry is there's so many blogs about SEO, right? So a lot of um, people will do guest posts on other people's sites. Um, or write an article on another site and get a link back to theirs. You can kind of do that with business too. You know, there's sites like work.com. You can submit an article and you can put links back to your site and it's actually you know, a decent site. It's owned by business.com. Social media, um, I mean, that's just, that's a whole nother world, but it's a great way to get links, um, whether it's through Twitter, whether it's through Facebook, because all these people are talking about your products through the social network, and then maybe they're writing a blog post about you, or maybe they're putting that link in, you know, delicious and saving it. Well, that's indexed and that's coming back to you. Um, news. We have a guy at our company who, he's sort of a PR guy, but I mean, his sole job is to get us, get articles written about us, get news stories written about us um, within blogs, within, you know, big name papers, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, when it comes to SEO, like I mentioned, WordPress is extremely helpful. This plugin, it's called All-in-One SEO Pack. It will take care of your URLs. It will take care of your duplicate content. It'll ensure you don't have any. Um, you know, with WordPress, when you, you have like your tag, you have your author, you have your category, this will block all that stuff for you so you're not having, you know, that same story, that same story in four different places. It also allows you to create custom title tags, custom meta tags all in one place. Um, URL configuration, like I talked about, another great thing with WordPress. You know, you can write whatever you want. You can customize it how you want. This right here has like a full list of really great plugins for SEO. Um, and again, I'll put this up so that you guys can have it. Um, if you want to learn more about SEO in general, I recommend these three sites. Um, the nice thing about SEO mods and search engine land is they have everything from the very beginning to the most advanced stuff and everything in between. Um, they have checklists, um, I think it's down here, the beginner's checklist for small business SEO. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, a lot of them even talk about WordPress, like integrating it with your WordPress. Really great sites to just give you the basics and get you started. And it's nice if you do have your own site like so many of you do that you can kind of try out this stuff and see, okay, what's working and what's not working. With SEO, it's an absolute trial and error type thing. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, uh, a dot com for SEO mods and a dot org. If you go to dot com, I think it redirects to dot org or the other way around. Okay. Um, yeah, it's funny. Okay, that's it. I know there's questions. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> Could you bring up the last slide? Sure. Thank you. Could you tell me what Progress Software does again? I'm sorry. Let's sure. Tell me what your company does again. Sure. Um, voice over IP, virtual phones, I thought yeah. I heard web design. And yeah, so we actually we have a company called Grasshopper Group, and we have different products within that. Grasshopper itself is a virtual phone system, so if you're a small business or like entrepreneur, you can get an 800 number, and you can have all this stuff that like a big company has, and it's like 10 bucks a month. So if you're out on the road a lot, you can have your 800 number forward to your cell phone or to your home phone. Um, it's kind of just a sound professional type thing. Um, and our second product is Chargeify, which is a recurring billing application. So like if you have a subscription-based service, um, especially like Web 2.0 and SaaS companies, because all of your billing information works with like PayPal, Authorize.net, all that stuff. Aside from the 800 number, can you get a local number? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use local numbers too, and you can have you know you could have five different numbers that all forwarded to the same number. So. 
So your That's job every cool. day is doing SEO just for those two. It companies. is. It is, and we have we have another product coming out too, which is like a word of mouth tool. Um, so yeah, my job is doing SEO for just all those things. Sites, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. I used to do. I used to work at an agency in the agency environment, and I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go in house and see how that's going. <laughs> Thinking I'd have one product. <laughs> No more questions? Well, it's interesting that one product needs a full-time SEO person. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had started there. I started there uh, last May, and they had just they had done a little bit, but not a ton. Um, it, it's amazing. I mean, our organic traffic has increased like 120 percent year over year. Organic sales have increased like 100 percent, and it's just from you know adding content, um, adding a blog, doing all that stuff. Do so. The extensibility of WordPress is, I think we, a lot of us are familiar with. As we add plugins and capabilities, do we in any way compromise? Any the only aspects? thing that I would say is your site speed, your page speed. So the more plugins you add, the more it slows your site down. Um, rankings are started to be affected by load time. Um, Google's actually come out and said that. And um, I'll show you, um, I want to show you Webmaster Tools as well. Um, so I, I know that when I was, was at WordCamp here a few months ago, and they had a great session on you know speeding up your WordPress. So that's the one advice I would give: is if you're adding all that stuff, make sure that you know you're not slowing your site down a lot. Have you seen it that any themes have SEO built in, in which case you wouldn't need to use the plugin? Or I haven't personally. Um, in most of the WordPress experience that I've had is either our developer developers like creating the template themselves or just you know a basic theme. Um, but I haven't seen that. So I think Lisa says it's um Does it? mm -hmm. SEO. Okay. Yeah, I mean I know there's a ton of stuff out there. Um, I just know that I mean I love that all in one SEO pack. It's like my savior. <laughs> so are you gonna post the slides? Yes, I will. Um, Kurt, is there some place that I can put those up, or? Um, there will be. Okay. We <laughs> <laughs> have, have a slide share account uh, for okay. for Boston Word, WordPress. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of uploading the slides, and we do have videos from the session and the other session recorded, and we'll get that out in the other week or two. Um, and I actually have a slide share account as well. Um, so I will tweet it and I'll put the hashtag up for Boston WordPress. If that helps. Um, okay. Or if you want to just email me, I'll send it to you. Um, we end up compiling everything together in a Boston WP.org. Um, so we'll have videos, slides, and just some, some general announcements out there. So. What's your Twitter? At KCG. Um, I'm trying to get on the internet here for you. And what's your email address, please? I will put it up right now. That will probably make it easier. Oh no, we do. We actually have the same thing. We have a different CMS as our main site, and then WordPress as our blog. Um, yeah. There's a there's a WordPress. If you're using Joomla, there's a WordPress plugin for Joomla. Remember using that? Yeah, most of the plugins are pretty easy to configure within your hosting. Okay. Service. Just knowing that it's possible. Yeah, definitely. Details.
And your link building, do you use any automated tools to um, like article marketing automation or any of those kind of tools to? Uh, I use an intern. <laughs> um, no, I don't. Um, you know, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see a lot of um, a lot of article like directory type stuff that you know someone will, it'll just go out and submit it. I don't think that that stuff is that valuable to be honest. So I don't personally use it. Um, but I do have an intern who um, actually goes out, checks about fifty blogs a day. <laughs> Um, if there's anything to comment on, checks forums. Is there anyone asking about you know a product, a related product? Um, Google Alerts is helpful. Yeah, Google Alerts. Yeah, we use that as well. Um, very helpful. Uh, from SEO point of view, is there any difference between domains with www and www? Not really, but that's a good point. So one of the things is you should really choose one or the other, um, but it doesn't matter. So. Um, I use, for our site, we use the non dub dub dub, but it's really up to you. The nice thing is you can set your, um, I think it's your HTS, that's right, too, or your CNAME server so that it redirects whichever one you're not using. Um, so, this is not very view of this. This is Webmaster Tools. You guys are looking confidential information. Um, the nice thing about it is it gives you all the information on your site, right? This is the stuff that I was talking about that's new. How did you get to that? Um, Google.com slash webmasters. So you can sign up for an account. You have your XML sitemap that we talked about earlier, and you just submit it, and it starts giving you all this great information. So you can see, are there any errors? Well, there's one in sitemap. Um, I have a, a thing in the sitemap that then I have blocked by the robots. Not found, restricted by robots. This is a new thing with soft 404s. Um, but you can start seeing, like, you know, what are they putting value on your site with? Here's some of the keywords. You can see, you know, how many links they're attributing to your site. Um, you know, which pages have the most links. And you can even start getting in depth, right? Um, you know, what are people searching for to get to your site? You know, how many impressions, how many clicks. Um, now, this is might be a dumb question. How is this different than Google Analytics? Google Analytics is very accurate. Okay. Um, this is, I don't know how accurate. <laughs> I mean, you know, Google Analytics, you have it set up on your site, so you know if someone's clicking. This is Google giving you their data. They're never going to give you 100% accurate data, so you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, but it's really great to find out, you know, if you have any issues. Um, so this is the thing I was talking about, your crawl stats. It'll tell you how often it's crawling you. It'll tell you your page speed. Um, it'll give you suggestions, errors. Um, if you find that, you know, you Google your site and it comes up with one of those, do not click on this. If you come in here, it'll tell you why. Um, internal links. Subscribers. Um, it's really, it's a really great tool. Um, and that's a good point. I didn't even talk about analytics. If you're doing any sort of SEO, um, or any, if you're doing any sort of online business, you need to have analytics on your site. Um, it can give you so much information in terms of who's coming to your site, what are they doing when they get there. Um, you know, maybe some you have an 80% bounce rate on your homepage. Well, why? Obviously, you need to change something. Analytics are a really great way to figure all that stuff out. And the same thing, you can see what keywords are people converting on and what keywords are they not converting on. Um, and then you can start building your content around that. Highly, highly recommend analytics. Google Analytics is free. There's a plugin for WordPress to put Google Analytics on your site. Go ahead. How, how do you learn to um, get that kind of data from Google Analytics? just playing with it, going in and looking at it. Um, the thing with SEO is, like I said, it's a lot of just being in your site and becoming really familiar with it. Um, and then reading up. I probably read, I probably spend an hour each day just reading up on SEO and social media. Um, I'm not saying that you have to do 
do that. <laughs> but that, um, it, there's a lot of really great information out there that can help you start to figure out what should I be focusing on. You can find a lot of information on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, people have so many really great tutorials on there. Yeah. So the, the links you gave us were kind of your recommended places to yes. find. Yeah, yeah, SEO Moz, Search Engine Land, like I said, those are two really great <coughs> um, so. Yeah, those are my two favorite. And mainly just because, like I said, they have everything from very beginner to, you know, to most advanced stuff. So if you kind of find yourself, like, I already know this, then you can kind of see what else is out there. So. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Email me any questions, like you get home, you're like, oh crap, I want to ask that. <laughs> Shoot me an email, I'll get back to you, or tweet me. I won't get back to you until tomorrow because I refuse to use Twitter at home. <laughs> <laughs>